energetic entanglements can occur in one or several different ways. Entanglements can be healthy, conscious, chosen, but sadly, some are not so healthy and are created from traumas, trauma bonds, fear-based realities or perceptions, whether real or not, perceptual obligation, and sometimes even abuse and coercion. Most of these are born out of what is typically deep generational patterning and programming and learned behavior mirrored from the attachment to someone's developmental caretaker during their formative years. Entanglements can be a tricky thing to navigate, especially since a lot of this programming and connection is from things that occurred when you were very young and probably don't remember and maybe have even blocked it up some of it that was negatively impactful or something that may have caused any sense of shame or embarrassment that you don't want to own up to, and probably rightly so if it wasn't even your fault. And even though these entanglements aren't necessarily chosen, and some may have been thrust upon us unwillingly or under undue pressure, it is still our responsibility to take what has been given to us and to make the most of it, gleaning the nutrients of the lessons learned while releasing what no longer serves your evolution process. So the first step to disentangle is to develop awareness of your energy compared to someone else's energy, to know what is yours and what isn't yours so that you can keep what helps and just release the rest. Throughout your day, throughout your life, you go to work, you travel, you interact with people out in public, you interact with other people energetically, whether they are in your peripheral environment or not. Intentionally or not, every interaction you have with another individual, entity, corporation, whether that interaction is physical, mental, emotional, or psionic, leaves a sort of energetic imprint upon your energy system that in a way forces you to meet that person in whatever point of attraction that you found each other. And then if you both so choose to follow whatever storyline that leads you on in order to play out the karmic cycles that are attracting you to that person in the first place and to find resolve and healing and learn the lessons that karma so often freely provides if you work within that flow, which most people do either consciously or unconsciously, but most of them do it pretty unconsciously, which is why we're talking about it. Karma develops patterns in your life. It's almost like the blueprint or the map that your soul provides from the get-go so that you get here sort of knowing what to do beyond whatever imprint your family has put on you along with their goals, dreams, ideas, and wishes. So then you have to sort of dig out and through your family's patterning and come to some sovereign conclusions about who you are and what you're here to do in order to get off of that first challenging step of the karma will and take a whole layer of entanglement along with it, thank goodness. This is often disruptive to family cycles of communication and just overall functionality of getting along with others in the family and is often why some types of people begin to disconnect physically from their families when they start to evolve beyond the programming of their youth. But if they don't and they keep in those family patterns, take over the family business when they don't really want to stay confined to that small town that they grew up in if they want to break free or never get back to school to finish that degree. Nothing really evolves for them past that point and they can just sort of settle into this energy or into the patterns and not evolve very much past the person that they were when they graduated college or high school. They can build families, just do the daily grind. And some people are really super happy doing that. And some are just not. But if people never leave the energetic boundaries of their upbringing or don't experience any sort of variance in life and do something with it to grow themselves, evolution has the opportunity to just kind of stagnate, if not to devolve altogether as the karmic patterns replay themselves over and over again in the dominant harmonic frequency of the environmental stimuli that supports the patterns that they grew up with and to play out over and over again. In other words, don't get stuck. Get out every once in a while, experience or learn something new. Not moving forward is moving backwards at the rate the world is trying to evolve herself to. And not making a choice or a decision is choosing by default. Examine any of your old patterning from childhood from which you base your operating system. Look where it comes from and cut or work to heal any relationships from your past that may need some attention. Entanglements can come from every interaction we have. Unless you have an amazing and highly developed shielding, you feel and experience energy exchange from your family, from your partner, your kids, your coworkers, your friends, the people you run into on the street, and the list goes on. You have energetic entanglements that are transactional with people that you do business with, and you have entanglements that are mental, 
because you share the same ideologies and belief sets. You also have entanglements that are emotional and relationally based, as well as those that are spiritual in nature. You have attachments to things, pets, and places, and all of these help to contribute for the better or for the worse for the holistic person that you are and the experience that you're having on planet Earth right now. This is the main and the first reason why we highly recommend shielding and focus our teaching on a couple different techniques for it in our courses. And in fact, if you aren't going to bother to do some kind of shielding, whether by our method or your own, then probably don't bother doing this disentanglement process because if you don't do it regularly, then stuff really doesn't heal all the way. And in fact, can let something in that is resonant to the original trauma that one is still trying to heal and may just end up re-traumatizing someone all over again until they decide that it's time to heal that wound once and for all. Resonant trauma is something that happens when two people have either a similar trauma or more likely an oppositional trauma or abuse pattern. A similar trauma will support each other's healing process in a way that's pretty comforting. You can find someone to relate to that understands exactly what you have been through. And if you can be there for each other while you heal your most vulnerable parts. A resonant trauma that is an oppositional one is one that reflects in mostly codependent style relationships. It's a situation where one person's trauma is what triggers the other person's anger or balance problems and leads to cycles of control and sometimes abuse until they can either come together at a balance point in which they both learn and grow together enough to be functional and let go and heal from the abuse that they both experienced previously by experiencing something better together and to get any over ego and identity issues one or both but probably both people might have in that situation but more often than not one of these people just get to a point where they've grown enough and have had enough and just get up the courage to leave or make a shift in the relationship dynamics while the other one might just get angry and worry about it the point is that we want to avoid these cycles and these types of relationships this is why we take the time to heal our wounds and learn what's necessary to let go of so that these old patterns can finally cease to be and why we can get off of the karma wheel once and for all. Shielding will help this process and it is in fact crucial if you're not wanting to feel like you've taken two steps forward and then three steps back every time that you make a significant shift. The backswing from clearing and releasing can feel pretty dramatic like moving backwards or losing progress but it's usually just happening because it's the body's way of leveling out and the brain's time to rewire and reintegrate the process that you just made. But the harsher the push you make, the harder you're going to pay for it physically over time, which is why I don't recommend just cutting everything away all at once unless you want to be in for somewhat of a rough ride. But the more shielded, grounded, and centered that you are throughout the day, the more evenly the energy is going through and around you flow and function. Monitoring the effect other people have on your life, how you feel after communicating with them, being in their field of energy and their presence, how their advice or their support has either helped or maybe hurt, can help to indicate what connections are healthy ones and which ones may be needed further evaluation before you keep pouring more time and energy through it. Put boundaries for yourself and others up in healthy, reasonable ways that support the health of the environment and everyone within it. Keep in mind that the closer that you are to someone, the closer that you are to their personal and psionic space, and the more time you spend with them, the more energetically entangled your relationship can become. And this can get messy if you don't resolve conflicts. If your energy conflicts with the energy of someone else in the same living space, it can get uncomfortable and sometimes downright volatile just by presence. And if your energy is more complementary, the space will feel more serene, secure, and healthy. If there's conflict in relationships in your home spaces, just deal with it and clear the air so that the space doesn't feel chaotic. Otherwise, the cord attachments between you two can become really unhealthy and cause further conflict and dis-ease within yourself and your relationships. And if you don't want someone else influencing your decisions and how you feel in your space, make any adjustments that feel healthy to you and the relationship. Release any other people's energy from your field and your energy body daily, clearing your psionic foci and dealing with any old baggage so that you can be clear on you on your feelings and your energetic imprint 
and say bye-bye to toxic relationships and situations. When you sit to meditate, put some practice focus with the intention to release any energy that does not belong to you and call back your own. If you do this daily, this will help you to begin the process of sorting out your energy from everything and everyone that has left their mark on you. In part five, we will discuss the nature of toxic relationships and how to find what's healthy for you. There will be a cord cutting guided meditation at the end that will help to facilitate all of this further. But for now, just building the awareness is what we want to put our focus on. Tomorrow, we'll be talking about the psionic foci or the chakras and explain the physics of how energetic entanglements occur. Thanks for being here. I'm Kendra Soleil. Namaskar and have a great day.